This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Hey, what's good guys? It's Zach. Hope you all are doing well. In this video, we're going to be doing an overview of Launcher Launcher V2. As promised, a little while ago, I told you guys I would make this video. So here we go. And a long time ago, I actually did an overview of the Launcher Launcher version that you can find in the Play Store. Now this one, you don't find it in the Play Store, but I went ahead and I listed it down below. The latest alpha version actually came out today as of the recording of this video, April 17. Uh, you may see it a couple days later, but uh, yeah, that's the latest alpha version. So you can find that in the description below. So make sure you check it out. But let's go ahead and take a look at what this launcher has to offer. I can already tell you that it is one of the best third party pixel style launchers out there. And yeah, I really, really enjoy it. And I know you guys will too. There's a lot to go. There's a lot that goes around. I don't know how to speak anymore. <laughs> There's a lot going on with this launcher, so I'll try to do it as quickly but as thoroughly as possible. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that you guys try it out. So this is the launcher here. You have your uh, Google feed over to the left here. I just installed this a little while ago. Long pressing on here, we have you know our standard stuff here, home screen settings, widgets, and wallpapers. We're gonna be spending most of our time in the home screen settings. You may notice that <laughs> they did a really good job with the settings. Uh, each you know section has its own icon, which is very nice. They're nice and colorful, well put together. Of course, if you need to find a specific setting right away, you can use the search bar up top here. It's a pretty standard thing, but it's nice that they included it. And then the three dot menu here, you can restart the launcher, and then you can also uh, hit that. You can select your home app straight from here, which is pretty handy actually. All right, so our first section is the theme section. I know you guys are gonna be spending a lot of time in here. I know I will be, that's for sure. Our first setting is for the icon packs. Now, uh, these are all of the ones that I have installed right now, and uh, you can rearrange them to set which one you want to enable. So the first one up top will be the one that'll show in the launcher. It's pretty cool. You can get more, of course, just go to the Play Store straight from here, which is pretty cool. I like that. And uh, yeah, you can drag them up to enable them, which is pretty nice. And then we have icon masking. You can make unthemed icons match the applied icon. So if a specific icon, let's say, I don't know, a specific app that you use isn't themed by the icon pack, um, the launcher will mask it to do its best to kind of match the icon pack, which is pretty cool. Then you can change the default icon shape. You've got square, rounded squares, squircle, circle, teardrop, and cylinder. That's pretty nice. You have more adaptive icon settings. You have three extra ones here. You can create adaptive icon packs, automatic adaptive icon packs, or icons for all apps rather. And then you have colored backgrounds, and then you can also replace white backgrounds for that. There you go. Now, ooh, okay, so we have a little bit of a bug there. And then you have style settings. So the first one here is the theme. As you can see, I have the black one enabled. It looks really nice on an AMOLED display. And then we have these other ones here. So light, light with dark text, dark, dark with dark text, black, and then black with dark text, which is pretty, pretty interesting. You guys can mess around with that. You can also follow the system theme and then follow the wallpaper. Uh, so if you have a bright wallpaper, it'll be bright. And if you have a dark wallpaper, it'll be dark. Um, but I'm gonna keep it like this for now. It looks really good. And then you can choose an accent color, just a few here, uh, which isn't bad or anything because you can customize it uh, to your liking. Uh, if you have a specific color that you want, you can copy and paste the code into there if you want. And yeah, it's really nice, really nice uh, feature there. And then after that, we have fonts. So you can change the font of different elements. Now this is pretty neat. So you can choose a global font there, enable that. And of course you can change that. Got a bunch of different ones here and you can find different fonts as well. Uh, but if we were to do this, we can really pinpoint what font we want for like the home screen, for example, app and folder names. We can change that to something else. Um, we can change the at a glance widget to have a different font. Uh, we can have the app drawer app names and the actual app drawer action names and the tab names all have different fonts. And so you can change them all and make them look the way you want them to, which is pretty nice. You can't really do that in a bunch of other launchers out there. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, really make it look the way you want. And then we also have the blur effect for the app drawer, the dock and the settings background. You can enable that turn that on or off and you can adjust the blur strength as well all right so before we get to the rest of the launcher i just wanted to take this quick opportunity to thank skillshare for sponsoring this video skillshare is this awesome site dedicated to helping people learn and boost their creativity with over 25,000 different classes spread across categories such as design photo and film technology entrepreneurship gaming marketing and much more you will be sure to find something that suits you skillshare is the perfect place to help you learn and share sharpen skills for things like designing mobile applications or mastering Procreate on the iPad, which are both things I'm actually taking advantage of and really enjoying. For under $10 a month on an annual plan, you will get complete unlimited access to their full library of classes, which I think is an incredible deal. But not only that, 
the first 500 of you that use that first link down below in the description will get a free two month trial. So make sure you hop on that right away. All right, so next up we have desktop settings. Now, of course you have your basic stuff like grid size. As you guys should know, my setups generally have a nine by five grid. Um, that's usually what I stick with. And then you have overlapped placement. This is another standard thing as well, where if you want to put a widget on top of another widget, you can do that if you'd like. You can even do that with icons too. You can hide app names. As you guys should know, this is part of the clean trifecta for setups, uh, hiding application names. That's pretty, pretty key. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, you can also have multiple app names if you really wanted to which is pretty interesting and then you can adjust the icon size that's the standard one right there at 100 but you can boost that up if you'd like another standard feature is for when you install new applications they'll get plopped onto the home screen automatically now here we have some additional stuff like notification dots which is which is nice i know a lot of people like notification dots uh, i kind of like them sometimes i do sometimes i don't it's i'm kind of weird with that i don't know why uh, you can also allow home screen rotation so if you wanted to use your home screen and landscape orientation you can do that you can hide the status bar and then uh, you have have wide widgets let widgets stretch to screen edges ah now that's a pretty cool one too so if you have like a news widget for example and you want it to stretch from edge to edge and not just be this isolated rectangle in your screen you can add that there if you want and then you also have top shadow shadow under the status bar all right so the third section here is home widget now this one's pretty simple and what's cool about this is that you can get a preview so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the home screen and in the settings and all that stuff so that's really nice and then you also have the time so you can have the time there instead i'll go ahead and take that off because i already have the time up top uh, but then again, <laughs> I got rid of the status bar. Um, but what you can do, you can have the time there instead if you'd like. And then you can also show a large clock up top. Excuse my notifications. You can also change it to a 24 hour format if you'd like. And then you can also use pill style search bar. So if you want that there, you can do that as well. If you guys remember that from a previous version of Android. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to keep it at, at a glance for now. And then you can also choose your weather source. You can choose the temperature unit if you have the weather enabled. And then you also have calendar source for when you have new stuff. And yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that there. See what that looks like on the home screen. There you go, it looks pretty clean. You also have the dock setting. So this is where we got all the dock stuff. We have dock style. So by default, that's obviously the one that you're seeing. And then we have custom. Now this one's pretty fun. So you can choose a background, a shadow, corner rounding, which I know a good amount of people like to do. So as you can see, the dock now has a little bit of a background and I really like this. It kind of separates the dock from the rest of the home screen. It gives a, a nice look to the home screen. And then of course, I really like the corner radius there and how it's curved. Uh, so if I go back to the dock settings, you can adjust the rounding. Uh, you can adju adjust the transparency, the dock size, and then you also have page indicator. I usually turn that off. And then I, let's see, let's, let's see what the arrow looks like. So it's probably just going to be a standard up arrow, right? There. Yeah, there it is right there. And yeah, that's pretty much that just to indicate that you can swipe up from the dock, which is pretty cool. And then you can adjust the number of icons that you have there. Uh, you can have two rows if you'd like. You have the, I have the search bar in there. You can choose colored icons for the search bar. So if I were to turn that on, the icons for the search bar would change. There you go add some more color to your home screen. I like that. And of course, as you guys should know, I like hiding the dock that completes the clean trifecta. And if you aren't aware of what the clean trifecta is, uh, you either forgot or you don't watch best Android setups. <laughs> so the clean trifecta basically is no status bar, no icon labels and no dock. It just makes everything a lot cleaner and it looks really nice. So if I were to hide that, we would then have the complete clean trifecta next up we've got the app drawer settings uh, so we can change the transparency for that the icon size the number of columns the row height uh, I did not mean to do that <laughs> let me uh, put that back I believe it was at 100% I don't remember um, but yeah you can also hide applications as well you can hide application names so there you go you also have multi-line app names so if an application has a really long name you can change that so that you can see the full name of the app and it doesn't get cut off at the end and then you have, of course, you can hide app names. And then, uh, okay, so there, th thank you. And then you also have uh, tabs. So let's go into here. So we have the basic application tab. That's where all the apps are. And of course, you can add a new one. So let's do one for like tools, for example. Okay, told, tools. And then you can choose which applications you want. So loading. All right, so if I wanted to put, for example, like uh, the clock and um, let's say Dropbox, uh, 
let's do good luck. Let's just do those three for example. Swipe up and boom. So you have different tabs there. You can swipe over and you have the applications that you chose for that specific tab, uh, which is nice. It's a nice alternative to not having folders. And that's one of the biggest things that I really like having in Nova Launcher and even the One UI uh, launcher, the stock launcher for the Galaxy S10, uh, is that you can have folders in the app drawer. And, and I've been talking with <laughs> the Launcher uh, Twitter account about this, and hopefully they implement it. And they said we have tabs, which is great. And don't get me wrong, I like this feature. Some other launchers don't even have this, especially Pixel style launchers. They don't have this functionality, which is nice. Uh, it's not nice that they don't have it. It's nice that it's in here. Okay. And I really dig it. It's, it's really nice. It works well. Um, and it's a nice alternative, but it would also be nice to have folders as well, just just to have more options, you know what I mean? So, but there you go, you have that, I do like that a lot. You also have your search bar, so you can not only search for things in the app drawer, but you can also search for things online, so use it like a Google search bar. And then you have applications, so as you saw at the top there, there were a list of applications, those were recently used applications, so you can turn that on or off. And then you also have shortcuts to frequently open the screen, so that's pretty nice as well. I say pretty nice, a lot. That's because this launcher is just filled with nice stuff. And then you have some other miscellaneous stuff here. So show all apps label. Uh, if you wanted to have that, you can do that as well. Uh, second tab for work applications. And then remember scroll position. This one I think should be higher up in the settings, uh, but it's fine. At least it's here. And basically what this is, is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, if you were to enable this, I'll go back to the home screen, go back to the app drawer. I'll scroll down here. And then if I were to back out of the app drawer and do something else on my phone and then come back, it'll stay exactly where I left it. If I turn that off, it would push you back up to uh, the top of the app drawer. So that's nice. Uh, so you don't have to keep scrolling around if you want it to be in that specific section of the app drawer. All right, so next up we have our search section. So you can choose your search engine. You can choose App Search, Google, or S Finder. Of course, we're gonna keep it with Google. We want that. And then you have voice search button. You can do that. And if you enable that, you can choose it to open up uh, the Google Assistant. Now this is a pretty neat thing here, dual bubble search. So if I were to enable this and go back home, now I enable the doc so that we could have that search bar right away. And you can see it separates the Google Assistant from the regular Google search bar, which is which is pretty cool. I like that. It's a nice touch. The dock search bar, of course, I have that enabled for whenever I have the dock there. Colored icons, of course, are there as well. And you can also choose the, the color of the search bar. You can have it light, dark, or you can follow the theme that you've enabled. And then you also have the app drawer search bar, glo global search, and some of the other settings that were in previous sections. But it's nice to have them here in just one uh, dedicated area for the search bar. So that's cool. And then after that, we have integrations. So of course we have the search engine and then we have data integration. So of course we go to the Google Play Store and we have the Sesame Universal Search and Shortcuts. If you guys, you guys should already know what this is. If not, uh, go ahead and check it out. And then of course you have the Google Feed off to the left. Of course you saw that in the beginning of the video and then you can also uh, choose the background color. You can have it light, dark, or follow the theme. So I choose for it to follow the theme because if it changes to light, then the Google feed will also be light. Uh, so there you go. That's pretty basic stuff there. And then after that, we have gestures. So if we double tap the home screen, it'll open up the, op the assistant, which is what I've selected there. If you tap and hold, you can choose for it to uh, change from, instead of having the open home screen pop up, you can choose for that to be something else. If you press the home button on the home screen, you can do something else and swipe down, open notifications, swipe up to open the app drawer. Swipe up on dock, obviously to open the app drawer too. But if I were to do like double tap to open up the assistant, like I enabled a little while ago, double tap, boom, opens up the assistant. It's pretty quick too, so that's nice. You can customize all of these to your liking as well. Uh, let's do, if I were to do the home button, let's do, let's see, let's have it open up the gallery just for the heck of it. So if I press the home button, boom, it'll open up the gallery. It's nice and quick. So there you go. I like that. So let's go back to the settings here. And yeah, so have fun with those gestures. There are a good amount of things that you can do there. And then you have backup. So if you want to back up your setup and do something else, but you want to save it and try it out later, or you want to share it with somebody, you can do that. You can create one and then you can restore one that you might have uh, backed up earlier. And then you have about. So you have the team, you have links, you have uh, you know the version that you're running and all this stuff. So I definitely recommend that you support these people because they've done a great job with this launcher. <laughs> it's one of my favorite launchers out there. Um, and my next setup will be using 
uh, lawn chair launcher for sure. It's really good. Uh, I definitely recommend that you guys try it out if you haven't already. It is a great all around launcher. It is free, which is awesome. So uh, thumbs up to uh, the lawn chair launcher team. Uh, shout out to whoever runs their Twitter account. Uh, you guys are funny. But yeah, it's nice and smooth. I like it. It's got a nice amount of features and it just works. So anyway, try it out if you haven't already. Link for this down below in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will talk to you guys in the next one and thanks for watching. Okay, gestures, uh, home button. <laughs> oh gosh. What? Why did you guys do this? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay, guys.